Farastad was known for two things. Being a king of Armenia in the 4th century during a time of political power struggle and being the last known winner of the ancient Olympics. In this video, we'll learn more about both of those things. Before Varastad came to rule Armenia, his predecessor, King Pap, who was initially aligned with Rome, had started working against Roman interests, and he paid for it with his life. For more on that, check out my video about King Pap. Although King Pap had two sons, both of them were too young to take his place. So this left the Romans in the market for a new client king to replace Pap. But they couldn't just install any random Roman to the Armenian throne. They needed somebody with a legitimate claim to the throne, who would also work to further Roman interests. Enter Varastad. Varastad was Pap's nephew, so he had royal blood, which also meant he was from the Arshaguni dynasty, who had been ruling Armenia for centuries. The Arshagunis had been aligned with Rome for generations, but Varastad was perhaps even more supportive of the Roman cause. You see, his father, along with his entire family, were once prisoners of the Persian king Shapur, who was a longtime enemy of Rome, and were later freed by the Romans, which allowed Varastad to eventually end up living in Rome. So as far as the Romans were concerned, he seemed like a safe bet and as pro-Roman as they come. Farastad also had a good reputation for his mental and physical capabilities. While we don't know much about his early life, we do know that he enjoyed bare-knuckle boxing. And we know that because before he was king, he participated in the Olympic Games in Greece and won. Though the complete records of the games are missing, it was recorded by Armenian historians of the time. You there! You're king of Armenia now! Okay, can I still keep boxing? No. And so, in 374, the Romans assigned Varastad to rule Armenia under the regency of Musher Mamigonian, the Armenian general Sparabet, who was also very pro-Roman. Shapur was not happy about any of this, having recently lost some battles to Roman-backed Armenia. So in 375, he tried to negotiate with the Romans directly. He called Armenia the perpetual source of trouble between the two empires and proposed that the Romans withdraw their forces so they could divide the Armenian kingdom between them. The Roman Emperor Valens rejected this offer, so negotiations dragged on for two years, during which Shapur would make increasingly escalating threats of a full-scale war. Initially, Valens felt confident about his chances as there already was a heavy Roman presence in Armenia. But in 377, the Goths revolted against the Roman Empire and suddenly Roman troops were needed elsewhere. So, Shapur's offer of dividing the Armenian kingdom quickly became very appealing to Valens as he was forced to negotiate and redraw his forces which further destabilized Armenia. Following the withdrawal of the Romans from Armenia, a group of Armenian nobles convinced the young and impressionable king that Musher had played a role in Pap's murder, and that he could be next. So Varastad invited Musher to a fancy dinner, where he murdered him. Musher's position was filled by his brother, Manuel Mamigonian. Now, if you're thinking, replacing a general who was just murdered by the king, 
with the brother of said general who was just murdered by the king might come with a minor risk of revolt. You'd be right, because Manuel revolted against Varastad and caused the king to flee back to Rome in 378 after four years of reign. Then Manuel formed a provisional government and initially allied with Persia, allowing Shapur to garrison 10,000 troops in Armenia. But later, Manuel revolted against Shapur, decimated the Persians that were stationed in Armenia, and defended Armenia against both Persia and Rome throughout the 380s until his death. As for Varastad, he was exiled by Valens to the British Isles, which is probably where he died at an unknown date. If you enjoyed this video, Check out my video about the preceding king, Pop, to learn about his bromance with Musher Mamigonian after they defeated the Persians in the Battle of Bhagavan, as well as a rather peculiar reputation he enjoyed thanks to his rivalry with the church. 